I remember somebody telling me about this a while back. And while, although I was very hesitant to do this one next, I decided to do this one. Mainly because I've always been interested in it as I am a fan of Nintendo in general. And because I've recently done a couple of those as well. Today we're going to be covering Princess Peach versus Princess Zelda. I think this is one is as old as Nintendo battles go. Almost as like Mario versus like Luigi and so on and so forth. Just very common battle. Even that of Link and you know maybe Mario fighting. Because they're just so, you know, old and classical when gaming and all that. People just decide that these two must fight each other. In any case, I thought that putting the princess of the Mushroom Kingdom up against the princess of Hyrule would be a pretty good matchup considering they both are, you know, always uh, getting captured and uh, needing to be saved and whatnot. Although I don't know how, you know, accurate that really is. Either way, the point is, is I do know this to be fact. This is a matchup that has been done before, but I thought it'd be pretty interesting to do it just in general. With that being said, we're going to be covering um, their scaling, you know, one, two, and discuss it at the end. So uh, let's get into this video right now, and I hope you guys enjoy. And if you do, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. Always helps. And uh, yeah, let's get into this right now. Princess Zelda is a major supporting character in The Legend of Zelda and a primary protagonist in its prequel Age of Calamity. She is the current princess of Hyrule and the latest member of the royal family to inherit the sealing powers of Goddess Helia. Um, and she's also, you know, you know Zelda. But that being said, we'll now be getting into this. I think it's very important to keep in mind that I'm going to be using Breath of the Wild Zelda because yeah, you cannot just composite all the Zeldas together. You have to take them one at a time. You can't just do them all. Superhuman physical characteristics, genius intelligence, vehicular mastery, highly skilled in riding and attacking with master cycle, longevity, awakened power, magic, weapon mastery, light manipulation, holy manipulation, telepathy, clairvoyance, statistics reduction, purification, power notification, barrier creation of light, gravity manipulation, sealing, absorption, creation, explosion, gravity, um, generation, ice manipulation, magnetism manipulation, time stop, energy manipulation, projection, force field creation, attack reflection, and portal creation. Uh, her max attack potency is city level. Uh, even after her power weakened, she was still powerful enough to briefly restrain Dark Beast Ganon and make him roar in pain, who in a weaker state was still durable enough to withstand the combined energy of four divine beast lasers. Just one laser being this powerful, and at full power she was capable of repelling an attack from Calamity Gammon, who by that point had achieved his true form. Her max speed is FTL, via the flurry rush while in a focused state she can make this move this fast while dodging guardian lasers. So yeah, that being said, that's gonna do it for Zelda's uh, scaling. Now we're gonna get into Princess Peach's scaling, so let's do that uh, right now. Princess Peach originally, Princess Toadstool, is the main damsel in distress in the Super Mario Bros. series. She's often kidnapped by the main villain, Bowser, and then saved in direct succession by the protagonist, Mario, and other times his sidekick and brother, Luigi. Like the other star children, Princess Peach was born to a stork and carried alongside many other storks to her respected home. She is accompanied by Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, Wario, and Donkey Kong, five other star children who were then thrown off course by Kamek, who was trying to kidnap the baby so that Bowser, the seventh star child, could utilize the power of all seven of them to conquer the universe. Now, with that being said, let's get into Princess Peach. Now, just keep in mind, uh, if you guys, I'm just gonna say this now, due to previous videos, if you guys don't think like Paper Mario is like, canon to the verse which i know is a controversial thing now me personally i think paper mario is canon to the verse thus making all this scaling i'm about to use correct but if you do not think that then we can change it but i don't really think it matters for this battle in particular anyways but uh yeah nonetheless let's get into this you know right now so just to clarify some things real quick we're just going to be getting into the attack potency and speed for peach uh it's really not necessary to go into all the powers and abilities most of them are mario's anyways and i just don't feel comfortable doing that with that being said let's get into that right now Looking at Peach's most basic attack potency, it's most universal level. Now, let me explain why. Even though she's one of the weakest in the series, she could still compare to other star children, including Mario, and we know how busted that guy is. Multi-galaxy level, Darth Cooper revealed that within a week, he conquered and remade the universe to Cooperverse. Mario had done battle with and defeated Darth Koopa twice, and Peach shouldn't be too far behind him, Luigi, or Toad. Large star level creates a realm with a star in it and a wide expanse of space around her. Comparable to other captains like Mario and Diddy Kong who accomplished the same feat. Then we can say high multiverse level plus likely high hyperverse level because um, 
Bowser also planned on destroying Future Dream. This dream in particular was stated by Mr. and by the guide booklet on page 28 to be an entire universe, meaning each dream is its own universe. With this info, Dream Depot ranges from at least 5D to infinite dimension. Then we can say she has universe level plus scaling for sure, and Super Mario RPG took on the best in clucks in combat, at least multiverse level, and Dream Team shattered the Dreamstone with her energy and star lows. They caused it to go unstable and shatter via tension, which is less impressive than outright destroying it, but it's still highly impressive. She may be weaker than Mario, Luigi, and Dreamy Bowser by a wide margin, but the Dreamstone is composed of... Um, 7,670,250,000 dreams universes, meaning even the slightest tension on it is still a uh, multi-universal level feat. Um, also, we can say she's high, hyperverse level again because she defeated Dementio, who surpassed the void, which was going to consume all existence, all worlds, all dimensions, all possibilities, and all timelines. How did Dementio surpass the void? First off, Paper Mario and the others tanked the void, but that's not all that's important here. Main look at Paper Mario's condition after the void. He has been uh, blasted um, interdimensionally back to a flip side and is unconscious. Now to compare when Dementio attacked Paper Mario and his party was blasted once again. Interdimensionality to the underwear and where once again redeemed unconscious the similarities definitely cannot be ignored um with that all being said that 100 backs up that then we can get back into even likely high hyperverse levels of scaling because we can say dream depot is possibly infinite dimensional possibly out of verse level because plato's book the republic exists in mario and is referred to as the truth by aristotle who in the who in real life was only person to um object to plato's theory of forms introduced in the republic there are in um analogies that bear resemblances to those in the said book and likewise the game says that it explains the world the universe and all things and answers countless questions in the end if the republic is actually legitimate in mario it would mean the intelligible world where all universal concepts exist and thus um and a temporal forms also exist and thus the void would erase them all and thus dementia would be able to too then we can say hyperverse level likely high hyperverse level possibly out of verse level with the pure hearts because she killed super dementia Looking at her speed, we can get her to be measurable because Bowser was traversing all Dream Depot and wiping out each dream one by one, which are universes casually as evidenced by how he's talking about his plan and such before destroying Dream Depot itself. Miss Star then says at this rate, he'll destroy the dream worlds one by one. She goes on to say that peace must protect everyone's dreams. This means Bowser was casually uh, moving at a rate that would allow him to destroy an uncountable set of uncountable infinite universes. Not only does Luigi fight Bowser in this game, but during the story, he actively chases Bowser through Dream Depot, so Peach accomplished a toned down version of this feat. Even so, he still scales to the full thing for being a touch faster than Bowser. Then we can say immeasurable with or without the pure hearts. The void consumes all existence, all worlds, all dimensions, all timelines, all possibilities. This means it nukes all of time and space and the void itself destroys all of time and space at time periods as well. The void is definitely rather of higher dimensional order as it's not even under the conventional aspects of near and far and it's actively capable of existing all throughout time and space and since it erases stuff above time in all aspects it should naturally be into those areas the characters actively resist the void dozens of times and should scale off of it possibly irrelevant now that's possibly once again i did this with luigi don't like the irrelevant scaling i'm just gonna put it at immeasurable to uh mftl plus speeds either way that's gonna do it for peach uh section so now we can talk about who actually wins the whole battle and we can get into that right now so when looking at like peach like just attack potency wise and um like just looking at like the attack potency and speed i don't think i have to get into like the craziness of how like peach just stomps zelda like this isn't really close at all peach just wins like i think zelda like she has like the triforce and like you know but like there isn't a version of zelda and i really tried to see if i can make this actually interesting but like just as the title discloses to you guys this battle just isn't close so peach just kind of wins and it's not really close at all because not only is she like even at her most bare minimum way stronger than her like looking at like even lower feats of scaling she's way past star level which is where zelda would even like that that's i mean just being planet level is enough to be zelda in terms of attack potency and looking at her speed, she's FDL, but Peach has MFDL plus to immeasurable levels of speed, which is like five to six to ten times of tiers higher. That being said, Peach just kind of stomps kind of like negative diffs, like Peach. Like, even if I put a scenario there, 
there really isn't one that would see Zelda win favorably. She just kind of loses. So this battle really just isn't close, like <laughs> the title describes. But uh, yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell if you did enjoy. And uh, yeah, Peach wins. And um, sorry, Zelda fans. And uh, if you have any questions, save them in the comments below and uh, whatever. And um, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Uh, thanks. And um, I can never say this. No, I've never been able to say this. No, thank you. And um, yeah, I'm out.